Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and we're going to take the next few minutes to look at the new map module in Lightroom 4. So I know that a lot of people arrange their images or group their images differently. Sometimes we do it based on people, sometimes we do it based on time, date, or year. But also, and probably more popular today, is the ability to group your images based on location, especially if that location happens to be embedded in the photograph. And for example, most camera phones today embed that information. I mean, you could turn it off, but I've got an example here where you can see when I click on this image right here, on the right-hand side, we have the GPS information embedded in that file. Now, if I want to see where I took this image on the map, there's a little arrow to the right of the GPS data that I can click on, and it takes me over to the map module and shows me that location. Now, we're using Google Maps, obviously, for this, and so you just need to know that you will need to be online if you want the map module to display the map. Otherwise, um, we're not allowed to cache the information, so you would just get a blank screen. So you do need to be online for that. Okay, now how do we navigate the map? Well, down here in your toolbar, you've got to zoom in and zoom out. We can also just use the keyboard shortcuts. Um, it's just the minus key or the plus key. You don't need to add the command or the control key to zoom in or zoom out. You can also hold down the option key, though, or the alt key on Windows, and then you can click and drag over an area to zoom into that area. We'll do that again just so that we can get a little bit closer. And now you can see exactly where I was when I photographed all of those images. Now, this is the street view, but we can also view the map a variety of different ways. Right here, we can see all of the different styles, and I can either click on each one individually, or I can use the keyboard shortcut, which would be Command-1 for this hybrid, Command-2 for the road map, 3 will go through the satellite, 4 is the terrain, and then 5 and 6 go between light and dark. So you can just pick whichever map you prefer. Let's go to Command-2, or it would be Control-2 on Windows, in order to just see the road map there. So this is great if your images already include GPS data, but what if you're photographing with a camera that does not record that? Well, we could return back to the library module because I want to pick a different collection of images so that I can show you what we can do. But remember, you don't always have to go back to the library. Right down here at the top of your film strip, you can select, for example, from all of your photographs or from your recent sources, or you can even add different sources to your favorites and then they'll appear permanently up here. So for example, if I go to all photographs and then we zoom way, way out, we can see on the map here all the different places that I've embedded GPS data. Now, I did this myself, and let me show you how. We'll go ahead and narrow it down a little bit. In fact, let's go to a collection of images that I photographed in Italy. And you can see over here in my navigator, I can quickly scoot over and look there. Or we could use that same keyboard shortcut, that option and then drag. Of course, that would be Alt on Windows and just drag into this area. So I was thinking that all of the images that I had in this collection were actually on this map already. But if I want to double check, you'll notice up here we have a bunch of different location filters. So these are the ones that are visible on the map right now. It, it changed what was available down there in my film strip. If I choose tagged, then it shows me all of the images that are tagged, and it'll actually blank out some of the images that aren't tagged. Likewise, if I select untagged, now it's going to show me all of the images that are untagged. So I might need to scroll through a little bit, but there we go. We'll start at the beginning, and I can see that all of these are untagged. So let's just scroll. All of these images I can see, I can tell so far in the film strip, were all photographed in Venice. So I'm just going to go to the end of that shoot, which is right here. I'll hold down the Shift key, and that selects all of those images because I want to add these to the map, right? So if I could see Venice right now, I could simply drag and drop them, but I can't. So let's go ahead and use the search map. And I'll just type in Venice and hit Return. Now it comes up with two results. Obviously, I want to be in Italy, so let's select that one. So it shows me Venice on the map. Now, I could zoom in and I could be really specific, but for the purpose of the demonstration, let's just grab these images and just drop them right there on that marker. 
because you see that first marker was telling me the results of the search, and then I dropped all the photos that I took in that location on top of it. If you ever want to see, for example, the map key so that you know what all these different markers are, you can go ahead and show that. So you can see the one here was the search results, and then these are my selected photos that I just dragged to here. And in fact, if I click on that, I can see my photos, and I can navigate through all of those images. But I'm not quite done yet. I want to go ahead and just make sure that all of my images are tagged in this collection, so I'll just quickly move through. No, sometimes it shows you really briefly. You'll think they're untagged, but then we just need to check those. And so when you release, it'll tell you what's been tagged and what hasn't. So here it looks like I've come across another series. So again, I can just select the first one, go to the end of the series that hasn't been tagged, and then click on that. This time I'm going to be a little bit more specific, and I'm simply going to paste in the address because I know that that's where this hotel was, and then again, simply drag and drop. And when I drag and drop my images on my map, in case I forgot to mention it, you can see down here that the GPS data is actually being added to each one of those images. So once I've done this, it's already embedded. Of course, if I make a mistake, all I need to do is select that image again and drag it to a different location on the map. Excellent, let's go ahead and look at what's visible on the map, and then I'm going to zoom out a little bit because I kind of want to see this, this overall area. Now, if this was an area where I photographed often or I thought I was going to go back and photograph again, what I might want to do is save this as a location. So over here on the left-hand side, I can create a new preset and it will actually name it with the location name. Then I'll go ahead and select Create. Um, I could have made that larger or smaller while I was in the dialog box, or I can go ahead and narrow it down after the fact if I wanted to, and I can reposition that location. What that really helps with is maybe I will zoom out, right, and maybe I'm looking at a different area, and then I want to go back to that same area. Well, now all I need to do is click right here to the right of the number of images that are in that area, and it will take me right back to that save location. So you can see how easy it is for me to navigate to different areas on the map. Now, here's an important point. I just clicked on this location, which is Iceland, but I don't see any images on the map because, again, the map is only going to show me the images in the collection or in the folder that I'm viewing. So in this case, what I'd want to do is select all of my photographs, and that way Lightroom will go out and look at all the GPS information and then map those images. So now it makes a little bit more sense when I click on my saved locations because I will obviously see all of those images. Okay, so if your photograph has GPS locations, we will automatically place that on the map. If your image doesn't have GPS locations, you can do a search and then drag and drop it. Or if you know the GPS locations, you can simply select all the images and just add that into the GPS field, either in the map module or in the library module. There's one other way that you could pair your information, and that is if you have something that keeps track of a track log. So the track log file format that we support is GPX, and in case your device doesn't record GPX data, there's, there's software out there that will convert it. But then all you would need to do is load that track log, and then once you've loaded the track log, you would go ahead and you would auto-tag the photos. One little important safety tip on that is that you just want to make sure that all of your images actually have the right time and date stamp. So I know a lot of times when I travel, you change time zones, and you might forget to change the, the, the date and time on the back of your camera. So all you would want to do is go in, in the library module and change or edit your capture time so that it would match up with your log. Okay, a few shortcuts. Um, Command K will actually lock all of your markers so that you can't move them. Um, I will show you this info, so that this kind of overlay that tells you where you're looking here. If that gets in the way, you can just tap the I key again to hide that. If we go back to grid view, I had showed you in the metadata area here. We'll go to an image that I know has metadata. If you click on the arrow here, it'll take you to the map module. If you ever did want to see this in Google Maps as opposed to the map module, you could hold down the Option key or the Alt key and click on that, and it would actually show you that in Google Maps, just something you might want to know. And finally, 
here you'll also notice that in the grid view, we have a new little icon. This is the map icon right here. It's the little marker icon. And again, if we click on that, it will also jump us over to the map module and show you where that image was taken. And one last thing is when you do get a list of those saved locations, you can go underneath the metadata area and you'll notice that one of the options here is map location and it will show all of those kind of presets, those saved locations, so that you can see how many images in the collection or folder that you're looking at reside in those map locations. Excellent. That wraps up this video on the map module in Lightroom 4. My name is Julianne Koss. Thanks for watching.